Hi everyone, I'm Rob Bloomfield and this is Accounting with Our Bare Hands, a series of short videos exploring the mechanics of cost accounting. The topic for today is the challenge of accounting for fixed costs, one, marginal costs versus reported absorption costs. So uh, there's a new word here we haven't discussed yet in these videos, absorption costing. Absorption costing means that we put both fixed and variable costs into our product cost. Now we've been using it all along, but we haven't mentioned it because we haven't seen a, an alternative. Right, so uh, we often don't name things until uh, we can distinguish them from something different which we haven't had. So today uh, what we're going to do is just look at, uh, at the problem with the type of costing that we've used. And uh, in particular the problem is that our absorption costing system we've grown to know and love does a very poor job of capturing the incremental cost of making one additional unit. In later videos we will see how to address that problem. So. Uh, I've made a few assumptions here on the paper. Uh, what we're going to do is assume that we have a business that uses a predetermined overhead rate that is 300% of direct labor dollars. So every time as a product manager you pay a dollar to uh, a worker, you pay three dollars to headquarters for all those shared resources that you're consuming like rent and utilities and you know uh, managerial production salaries and so on. And we're also going to look at a particular problem uh, that you might face as a product manager, which is you have, you know, someone has come to you with, with uh, a job they'd like you to do, and it's going to require $10,000 in direct labor dollars, and they're willing to give you $35,000 of revenue. Here's the question. Is this going to make your organization richer or poorer? Okay, well, as soon as you hear me talk about whether your organization is going to get richer or poorer, you should be thinking about the Queen's Cross. So I'm going to uh, draw this out right here. And as usual, giving a lot more space to the asset side because that's where m most of the action is. And, and right, so remember that the top of the cross, this is our balance sheet, uh, and the bottom is the income statement. So it's the bottom that we're going to be focusing on when we try to answer the question, are we getting richer or poorer? Okay, because we, you know, we're trying to know, are, right, are, are, in this case, are the revenues exceeding the expenses and our revenues are here, our expenses are here. Let's go ahead and project what debits and credits we're going to make if we take on this job. And let's start with the good news first. We've got revenue. And so that's going to hit the income statement and make us richer. And we're being going to do this all in thousands. So we're going to bring in $35,000 of revenue. And let's just keep it simple and say they pay us in cash. So uh, because we're bringing in revenue, right, we've We've uh, debited on the left and credited on the right, so we now have a bigger organization. Uh, and we also have a richer organization because we have revenue. It's not money we owe to someone else. Of course, we're not done. Now we have the bad news. So let's go ahead and deal with our direct costs next. And let's say that, uh, that what we have is a service business. And just since I'm making these videos, let's make it a video business. So uh, we make videos. We don't really have much in the way of uh, raw materials. It's just labor and lots and lots of expensive equipment uh, that needs to be included in our overhead. Okay? But let's start with the direct costs first. 
right? So uh, we have to, you know, we have uh, here $10,000 of direct labor. So we're going to credit cash for $10,000. And we have work in process for job Z, right, where we're going to apply all these costs and it's going to get that 10. Okay, now, uh, now we need to think about the overhead. And what do we know about overhead so far? Well, uh, let's create an overhead account here. And uh, the first thing, you know, given what we do know, we know how we're going to take the dollars out of overhead and put them into work and process. So what are we going to do? We are going to uh, multiply the 10,000 direct labor dollars by 300%. So we're going to add $30,000 of cost to job Z. Now, uh, when we go ahead and sell this, right, we're going to take the, uh, right, we put 40 in here, we're going to take it out, we're going to send it into finished goods, and then when we actually finish the job, we're going to credit finished goods, and now we're going to hit the income statement again. And so now, if, if we just look at the bottom half here, we have a revenue of 35 and we have a reported cost of goods sold. And let me emphasize an unadjusted cost of goods sold number. It's just the sum of all the things we're talking about selling, which is just this one. Um, and well, 35 minus 40 is negative five. So we're actually going to report for this product, right? We're going to report a negative $5,000 margin. So the answer must be obvious, right? Don't do it. If you take this job, you're going to get poorer. But not really. Oh, I realize, by the way, I, uh, my account is out of balance, I forgot to credit manufacturing overhead when I put the 30 in there. Okay, so, um, and that's really important and it's a good time for me to notice that and the reason I noticed it is because I know we're not quite done. There are really two problems that we've got. One is that right now uh, we haven't incurred any overhead as a result of this job. But there's probably some variable overhead. Okay? Uh, remember that the left side of the manufacturing overhead account is the incurred side. The right, I'll write it here, is applied. So we applied the 30, but we haven't, you know, we don't actually have enough information yet to figure out how much we incurred. So let's just, uh, I want to elaborate a little bit in this empty space here on this 300% direct labor rate because that includes both fixed and variable costs, right? So if you think about overhead, some overhead, uh, usually a lot of overhead is fixed. Rent, uh, you're going to incur the same amount no matter how much you produce depreciation on machines, uh, software licenses for video rendering and capturing and stuff like that. Uh, all of these things you know, are fixed. They don't change with the amount of work you do. And then you have some variable risk. So there's uh, uh, some degree of utilities vary with how much work you do, storage space, uh, wear and tear on computers and supplies and all of these things, uh, makeup, which obviously I'm not wearing any of, uh, but if this were more professional, I'd have powder. Uh, all of these things would be more variable and you might say, you know what, every time we've got someone working an hour in the studio, we, you know, a dollar of labor, uh, we're going to incur a little bit more overhead. So let's imagine that the way we got our uh, overhead is that we have $125,000 of fixed overhead and we have $25,000 of 
uh, variable overhead that we're anticipating, that's a total of 150,000. So if we're expecting 50,000 direct labor dollars, 150,000 divided by, right, so let's just add this up, here's 150,000. And then if we have an activity base of 50,000 direct labor dollars, that's going to get us our 300% rate in total. But really what we've got is a 250% you know, 250 percentage points uh, of what is basically a tax on labor dollars is to cover fixed overhead, and only 50 is to cover variable. So now when I ask, boy, how much are we actually going to incur because we took on this additional job? Well, really the only extra debit that is going to go into this account is for the variable cost, so it's only going to be 50% of the 10,000 labor dollars, and that's going to be 5,000. Okay? Now we have the very last step. This loss, 35,000 minus 40,000, this loss is the reported margin for this particular job, but it doesn't capture all of the effects that taking this job will have on income because it's going to alter the amount of over or under applied overhead that we have. Okay, so uh, let's see, just to, right, so the only entries I've made here are the entries for the, that I make as a result of this job. There's one more entry I'm going to make as a result of this job, and that's that you can see I've applied 30,000. I've incurred only five, so I'm going to have to make a, a $25,000 debit to overhead and a corresponding credit to cost of goods sold to adjust cost of goods sold for the extra over applied overhead that we have as a result just of this job, right? This is only the part associated with this job. But now if you look at it, right, so, so now we've, we've zeroed this account out because we have 30 on both sides uh, and we need to do that. And now you look, wow, we only have 15,000 of cost of goods sold. So even though the reported margin for this particular job is going to be 35 minus 40 or minus 5, the aggregate profit of the whole firm is going to go up by 35 minus 15. It's going to go up by $20,000. Why is this, you know, why do we have this discrepancy? Well, this $30,000 of overhead we applied to job Z includes the application of, uh, what is it, $25,000 of fixed overhead. It's not actually part of the marginal cost of this product. And so that's why I say that absorption costing, coming up with a single overhead rate uh, that includes both uh, fixed and variable costs is very misleading because it m basically we pretend under this system that we are treating our uh, fixed costs as variable costs. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let's take a look just at our manufacturing overhead account. And what I'm going to do, this is a little bit confusing, so I saved it to the end, but I think some of you will find this useful. Remember that the left side of our account is how much we incur, and the right side is how much we apply. And we're going to do this for absorption costing. Now, how much do we incur when you think about how much we produce and how many dollars we incur, it looks like the cost line in our CVP, cost volume profit analysis, because we're going to incur this fixed amount and then the variable cost rate, right, the slope of this line is F plus VQ, where Q is our driver use. But how much do we apply 
under absorption costing. Well, if we haven't used the driver at all, we don't apply anything. And if we, as we keep apply, you know, producing more and more and we use more and more direct labor dollars, what's going to happen is that this line is going to go up, right? So this is 300% uh, Q, where the amount we incur is 125,000 plus 50% uh, Q, right? So that's just the... A uh, numerical example that we have here where we assumed 125,000 of fixed overhead and then an additional 50% on every direct labor dollar for variable. And so this is how we apply it, right? It makes it look like all our costs are perfectly variable, uh, but in fact we incur them uh, in the same way we demonstrated uh, and calculated in our last CVP video. And so this is a real mismatch. Okay? And uh, this mismatch leads to uh, the first mistake that we need to be concerned about, uh, the first challenge of accounting for fixed costs using absorption costing, which is that we are going to be misled if we turn down jobs that have, uh, that have reported costs above our revenue, we're going to turn down jobs that actually make us additional profit because they have a high contribution margin. Absorption costing doesn't report contribution margins. It reports, uh, well, reported margins uh, at full, so what's often called full cost, fixed plus variable cost, okay? Uh, so that is our first look at the challenge of accounting for fixed costs. I hope you found it helpful, and I hope you'll uh, continue on with uh, some more related videos. Thanks a lot, and bye-bye.